I like the music. <laughs> Gotta get in the mood. Gotta get yeah. in the mood. Yeah. Welcome to the Message Talk Show, broadcasting all the way from London. I was about to say sunny London, but when I look out the window, I can see the rain coming down and we have thunderstorm warnings across the country. So it's not a sunny. So wherever you are tuning in from, whether you're tuning in from the Caribbean, Africa, America, good morning, good afternoon, and good night. You've probably been in Australia. Welcome to the Message Talk Show. So where are you tuning in from? Where are you tuning in from? Just post in the message box where you're tuning from, where you're tuning on, where you're tuning in from today, and we will honour you. We will honour you when you post to the message box to say where you're tuning in from. How we deliver education services to the public, and the question we're asking: Is it going to be permanent, or is there more to happen? Is there more to change? Well, I have, a, I have someone in the house today. Her name is Rijal, and she thinks this is just the beginning. So before she comes on to talk us, let me just read her profile. Rajol is a public speaker. She's an author. She's an event manager. She's a STEM ambassador and an educator. With over 10 years of experience working in the city London schools. She was born, raised in Spain, where she trained as a specialist language teacher before coming to the UK. She is the founder of Steam Power, a social enterprise that delivers STEM workshops and events to children from underrepresented communities. She believes that grades should not determine young people's career choices. Do you hear that? And we've seen that during this pandemic. She believes that grades should not determine young people's career choices. According to her, approaches to learning need to change so no child is left behind. I like that statement. No child is left behind. Additionally, she collaborates with other like-minded organizations, engaging the community with events that foster a love for STEM, and she'll tell us what that is, across the country. Her statement, the community needs to control the narrative when it comes to education. Negative stereotypes are sentencing many young people to a cycle of generational poverty, youth violence, and mental illness. She is also the founder of Extraordinary Parenting, a social platform that aims to empower parents from the African and Caribbean, African Caribbean community. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for a job, man. That was an amazing profile. I just had to read that today. There is no way I could not read that. No child left behind. We parents need to control the narrative. The door, man. Man, tell us the story behind you, man. How did you get here? The how did I get here? Well, yeah, what's your story? Tell us a story, man. What's there must story? be a story to this. Yeah. There's always a story, you know. The story is seeing many children in classrooms feeling under undervalued, feeling some of in their own words, they would say stupid, feeling disengaged and uh unmotivated because many of the activities or many of the curriculum itself doesn't cater to their needs, to their emotional needs and also to their academical uh, uh, abilities as well. So, so in order to change that, it to improve to an extent the, the behavior in the classroom, I think children need to be engaged and motivated about what they learn and excited about what they learn, if they can see that what they learn in has an application in the real wo world, in their reality, first of all, in the communities, I think we have a better chance of, of en engaging the younger generation. Yes, yeah. No, that's not a lie, that is very true, but there must have been a journey for you to get to that point, because what you're saying to me is exactly what's required and what's needed, we're looking at it, 
But what is your journey to get to that point when, when you came to that conclusion? What was it that brought you to that conclusion? Uh, excellent question. Well, what brought me to that conclusion is when I was doing I was doing a lot of supply teaching, and I would go from many to many schools, like from borough to borough. I would uh, do supply teaching in Brixton. I would do su supply teaching in, in well in Lambeth and uh, in Southwark, in Croydon, in Lucian. And I would see that uh, when you look at the behaviors towards learning and also behaving in the class among certain black populations from the community. It is pretty much the same, especially particularly among the boys, among the boys, especially the behavior issues, the, the lack of, uh, of, uh, of engagement. And I thought to myself, there must be something that is common to all this, to this pattern of behavior. It's no coincidence that you see similar behaviors across different, across different schools in different boroughs. So there's a common narrative that needs to be changed. That that's so, how that that's how that's how it started. So what we're saying is that the 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 the, the it, it's not just a feature of a particular set of people or a particular group of people. It's across the board with children, with young people. Yes, it is across the board. Yeah, in, yeah. in getting them engaged. Yes, and especially talking to people outside, especially parents outside uh, the school, you know, many parents feel disempowered when talking to, to, the, to the schools. You know, it tends how, to be- the, How do you mean being disempowered when they talk to the school? The school's supposed to help them. Yes, it is, but you see, you'll be surprised how many parents can, don't feel confident when talking to the school because maybe they don't speak English as the, as, as the first, English is not the first language. Language okay. is, a, is a major, major one. So you'd be surprised how many parents, even though they had probably more than one child going to the same school, they're not empowered to actually engage with the school. They feel that the school is not going to listen to them. But um, but the school, must, the school must sense this. They must sense what's happening in the relationship if, if the parents aren't engaging. So what, you know, what, what things do schools do to try and get parents to engage? It's really difficult. I know that some schools might try to have um, translated uh, apps in their website so the parents know what's happening, but the pandemic has been, uh, you know, has, been, uh, has made that obvious to everyone that not all parents are able to engage with the home learning facilities okay. because they are not that literate, literate in the first place. And also they might work and not, might, not, might not have the time to uh, sit down and support the children at home. Bye. Good message, talk show.